Hello everyone, my name is Chris Pillion. Uh, I'll be presenting on homework 7, which is image processing uh, for this class, Advanced Computer Graphics. Um, I'll start by saying I apologize if I'm repeating anybody else who's already presented. Um, since I'm not doing this live in class and I'm doing it beforehand, I'm not sure what's been said and what hasn't been said. So uh, bear with me a little bit if I uh, repeat anybody. Uh, I apologize in advance. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, just launch into the application to start, get a sense of what's going on. Um, so you can see I s started by building on the examples we went over in class. Um, I got rid of the cruiser object just for simplicity. Um, you'll see why later. Um, but you can see it's, it's rendering these two objects um, just to start. Um, here we have our shaders. Um, you can see I did three separate shaders here. I'll go over each one, um, and they each have their own unique uh, processing effect. Uh, you, you can also see that down here I added in the ca camera capability. Um, so I wasn't sure what example I wanted to build on to start, uh, and I kind of wanted to uh, tackle multiple of them. So what I tried to do was combine the functionality of examples 11 and 12 into one application uh, so I can view my shaders both on these objects and on the uh, on, on the camera on my beautiful face um, so uh, I'll show you each of my shaders in, in both modes uh, we'll start with the objects here um, and go over each one and we'll also walk through the code and how each one works um, although it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple um, so I guess we'll start with the uh, pixelation shader and so this one's pretty self-explanatory It basically takes your image makes it pixelated so if you see I rotate it here you can see these edges are very pixelated the light itself is pixelated um, etc so basically it divides your screen up into to tiny squares and then fills those squares with the with the color it samples um, down here I added something called a pixelation factor um, so that's basically how large the the square um, it's filling with the sampled color is going to be. So right now I, I, I have a pixelation factor of, of 5. Really it's just a constant. It's arbitrary. But if you increase it, you can see it gets more and more distorted and uh, less crisp. Um, and that's because y the actual square that it's filling gets bigger and bigger. If you pause the light here, you can see each individual square and how it's creating that pixelated effect by filling the whole square with that color. Um, so if I move this again, uh, that's kind of how it's how it's working. And I'll show the code for that. If we uh, reduce that pixelation factor, it's basically just making that square sw smaller, so there's more pixels to actually get the shapes uh, of the objects. Um, so you can play with that and kind of see how it how it changes as you rotate it around or scale this guy. Uh, the next shader I had was uh, I called it the faded shader and so basically this one just sucks the life out of everything. Um, you can see the colors are still here but it's uh, basically like turns these objects into something you'd find in your grandmother's house or something. Um, so I called it the faded shader. What I actually did was start, uh, my original intention was to make a black and white filter, but uh, when I started with that and I did a Google search, it basically came up right away. Um, so I was like, well, how do I change this? Um, and so I actually found that you can um, do dot products of, of the, the color vector, or each individual component of the color vector, um, dot it with some sort of weighted three component or vec three um, and actually just uh, weight each color and so it doesn't create a completely black and white thing but kind of sucks it makes it more uh, lifeless for lack of a better word um, so that's that one there it actually came out pretty well um, just tweaking some and tuning some numbers uh, the last one is the cartoon shader um, so this one actually uses the Sobel edge detection. You can see that very clearly on this cube. Um, but rather than stopping there and just displaying the edges, it 
mixes it back with the original image and so you get these edges but you also get all the color and image in between um, and so that kind of like highlights the outside borders but then gives you what's actually uh, going on in the picture um, so that's it for the objects if we turn the camera on, I'll go in the same order, start with pixelation. Uh, if we turn the camera on, so there's me. You can see I'm a little pixelated now, not as much as you could see with the objects, but if we increase this pixelation factor, you can see more and more squares popping up and I become more and more pixelated and distorted. Um, I was actually pretty happy with how this one came out. Um, as you can see, you clearly see the effect as you change this factor here. Um, so th this one uh, worked pretty well and I, I liked that. Um, another thing is, uh, sorry, back, I'll go over at the end, never mind. Um, the faded filter you can see sucks the life out of me. Um, the colors are still there, you can see they still see the red. Um, but basically it's just this filter um, that gives it more of a, a depressed tone. <laughs> um, and then the cartoon. The cartoon shader didn't work as well on the camera as I would have liked it. Oh, let me go back. It doesn't work as well on people um, as I would have liked it. I think there's a little bit too much detail here um, to be called cartoon. Um, but I was happy with how it comes up on, on objects in the background. So you can see the lamp and the mirror and this bobblehead and the table here. Um, I thought that that all came out pretty well. Um, it looks more of like a drawn scene, uh, which is what I was going for. Um, but something to improve in the future might be how it's processing uh, a more complex object like my face. Um, but all in all, uh, still pretty cool effect. Um, so I guess now we can go over the co oh one more thing um, you notice when I hit, turned the camera on it, it hid all the widgets kind of like we talked about in class I wanted to experiment with that also um, so if you turn the camera on or if you turn it off you can see these widgets uh, either appear or disappear depending on uh, what you're using uh, same thing with the pixelation I have the pixelation factor appear or disappear depending on whether you've selected that shader or not. So uh, I'll go ahead and start reviewing the code a little bit. Um, we'll start with the viewer. A lot of the, the uh, source files are unchanged such as UGL, etc. or the objects. Um, the big ones are going to be the viewer, the actual OpenGL rendering, and then the, the uh, fragment shaders. So I'll go over those those three. Um, so the viewer uh, is going to be responsible for how everything shows up in Qt. Um, so there was a little bit of work I had to do here for hiding things, setting up the camera, and kind of switching between both modes. So if you see here, um, usual stuff, setting the window title, um, opening a, a new OpenGL session. You can see I kept the camera stuff here. Uh, so I do all the initialization of the camera using Q camera uh, and setting it up here just like in example 12. Um, but I, d I don't actually start the camera here, unlike example 12. So I, I, s I do all the, the plumbing for it, but I don't actually start it. Uh, and then I added my three shaders here. Um, added uh, some labels for things so I could... Um, turn them on and off uh, depending on the mode, uh, added a push button for the camera, added a slide bar for the pixelation factor, went ahead and hi hid that right away since that's not the first shader that's going to be um, initialized at startup. This is all just layout stuff. Here I'm connecting my sing signals. Um, the two main big ones here are the camera signal. So you can see there's actually a call to the OpenGL or it sends it to the set cam function in my OpenGL function or OpenGL uh, source file over here, um, and then there's also a uh, set view uh, cam function that's called um, actually in this viewer, and that basically controls the hiding or showing of the camera, um, and I'll show you those down down below. 
Uh, same thing for this this pixelation factor uh, slot. One one goes off and sets pixel pi, set pixel sets the pixelation in the uh, source file for OpenGL, and then the other just calls this um, set pix uh, down below to hide the actual widgets. And so the way those works those work are um, if set view cam gets called, it checks to see if the text um, is the value of the text of that push button is camera on if it is it recognizes that the camera should be turned on so it sets the text for the user to see the camera off so that option is available and then hides all the widgets associated with the lighting and stuff that that just isn't relevant to the camera mode and that actually starts up the camera and then if again if the button is pushed the camera off button now is pushed It'll set the text camera on, it'll show all the lighting stuff again, and it'll stop the camera. Um, so that's basically the viewer side of things for the camera. And then for the, the set pix function, uh, it basically just checks if you're on the pixelation shader and shows the slide bar, uh, depending on whether you're on it or not. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, if we go over to the actual rendering, um, let's scroll up. Um, you can see these variables. It's initialized to not use the camera at first. Um, here's the set cam function. So basically, it just uh, flips a switch for whether you're using the camera or not, and that's recognized as a global variable for down below when it's actually drawing the scene. Um, once it actually decides what what mode it's going to be in, it it reinitializes GL. So that's a, a function I wrote. Um, so OpenGL, depending on the mode you're in, uh, will will initialize to different things. So if you're drawing the objects, it'll actually create the objects and add them to the scene um, or to be drawn to the scene. And if you're using the camera, it does its appropriate thing. Um, set pixelation just basically sets the global variable pixval to be passed to the shader later. Um, a lot of this is the same. Added my shaders in the initialize step. Um, and then it actually gets to the painting function, which a lot of the functionality is the same as we saw in the examples, except here there's a conditional for which set of code you want to um, to, to execute. Uh, and then down here I have a, a uniform value called pix, which I had talked about above. Uh, passes this pix val to the pixelation shader. Um, passing through that, uh, we get to the mouse events. I actually modified the mouse events to uh, adjust accordingly to how what what mode you're in. So if you're in the camera mode, uh, clicking and sliding your mouse will actually translate the the image. Whereas if you're in viewing the objects, if you click and slide your mouse, it's going to rotate the objects. Um, and same thing with zooming. So we'll get to the actual shaders now. Um, so you can see this one starts out just with the, the simple Sobel uh, edge detection method. But at the end here, uh, we actually do a, a mix between this, this filtered, uh, which is actually the edge detected image, and then the original image and, and its texture coordinates. And we mix those evenly with 0.5. And so you get that edge effect and also all the stuff in between. Um, which is uh, kind of the effect I showed earlier. Um, for the faded filter, like I said, I started this one out as a black and white, but kind of did some research to find out uh, how to change it. So it basically grabs the color from the texture and then uh, does this dot product of weighted values, uh, which I, I, I had originally started with GL Basic. Dot com. It was on a forum of there. What what weighted val what values to use for this dot product, um, but uh, I had modified them to get to kind of achieve the more faded, drawn out effect uh, that I wanted. And then basically these RGB values based off the these weighted dot products are fed to frag color. And the last one here, basically you set the dimensions for the pixel size, um, and then uh, determine the color and then fill the whole box in of the pixel. Uh, I'm out of time here. Uh, I'm about to hit 15 minutes, but uh, appreciate the time.
Thank you.